Welcome to the Shepherd's Rest Doc Talk. This is episode 43A. I'm Cam and this is Julie. Hello. This week's Torah portion is Kedeshim, which this week's Torah portion and last week's Torah portion normally goes together. So last week's meant after the death. This week's means holy. So I kind of thought, wow, yeah, with Yeshua. Now, while he was still set apart holy before, um, after now his we death, have the chance to be right, holy. Right, how even much more, which in this week's Torah portion, it's all about how to be holy, just like last week's. But this week is just, I feel like I'm reading Proverbs. Uh -huh. You know, boom, boom, boom. It's showing us what the Ten Commandments or Ten Spoken Words look like, okay? Instead of just right. saying, don't do this, it's don't do this, and here's some more to help you understand what that looks like, okay? And a few things I wanted to say before we really jump in is, holy means to be set apart. And the opposite of holy, we often want to say, oh, it means um, it's sinful or evil. It's evil. But right. the opposite of holy isn't sinful or even evil. It's actually common. So then you go to Acts 10 and you understand where Peter says, I have not eaten anything common, okay? Mm -hmm. Unholy or common. Common just, well, common means what it means. It just becomes run of the mill, no big deal. And, and one of the things where the Lord says, do not take my name in vain, it's do not make my name common. Right. Don't make it an everyday household item. Um, and we too shouldn't look like the world, right? We shouldn't mix into the world. We shouldn't look like everyday people. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean in our clothes. Now, if everybody's looking raunchy, I would advise not to look raunchy. <laughs> but our real actions have to do with, our, our real looking different has to do with our actions, how we behave. And, if and it's think, funny, if we, when, when you get a hold of Torah, and you begin to um, honor the Sabbath mm -hmm. and eat the way he said to eat, that right there just completely sets you apart <laughs> yes, from it does. everybody else, especially in this area. Yeah, yeah, especially down south where we are. And think about this, how we respond to people. I mean, isn't that a big deal? Yeah. Yet what's interesting is we now today define love according to the world. Right. Yet Yeshua in John, um, it'll be right here, in John, he says, you know, I do the ways of my Father, and I abide in His love, because He does the ways of the Father. Now think about it. everything we read in 19 and 20, Leviticus 19 and 20 is the Torah portion. Everything we read here, Yeshua did, because He is the living Torah, right? So these are not difficult or burdensome, and we know that from 1 John 5, uh, 2, 3, and He walked them out, okay? He lived it. In Hebrews 4.15, it says that we have a high priest who has been tempted by everything just like we have, yet he remains sinless. Mm -hmm. Okay, so all everything you read from last week, this week, everything in the Torah, he was tempted with all the things. So, oh, I can't help it. No, we can. We can walk in him. Now, one thing I love is in Leviticus 19.2, uh, it says, Speak to all the children of Israel and say to them, Be holy, be set apart, for I am the Lord your God am holy. Now, think about this. We are to look like our Yeshua, right? We are to look like our God. He's holy. But this says you shall be holy. It doesn't say you are holy. Because again, it's a process. So what is required for us to be holy? And then he gives it. He doesn't just say, now go be holy. Figure it out. He literally gives us step by step. That's right. But when we think of holy today, what do we think of? Not sinful mm -hmm. or not evil. How about like a monk? I yeah. think of a monk or a priest that walks around in a certain kind of garb. or You know, something who, who's always praying or walking around, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, something that says holy. But that's the cup idea where right. the Lord's like, mm, you guys wash the outside of the cup, okay? But the inside is corrupt. So here he's showing us how to get the inside clean. So then what just naturally happens is the outside becomes clean. Right. It's a process. So the fact that it says you shall tells us that, like Julie said, when we come into Messiah and then we start to learn Torah, Torah. Mm -hmm. Acts 15, the whole conversation about what are you going to, um, how are we going to have the, allow these people into the synagogues and they talk about the heart of the Torah, right? Right. Um, which is no idols, no sexual morality, and the food issues, okay? Then after that, you'll learn Torah. So here we see that same idea, you shall be holy. Walk it out. Walk out your day, your salvation daily, right? With mm -hmm. fear and trembling. So let's look at what some of how to be holy 
really looks like according to God's definition, not ours. So first we have no idols. I mean, that's a no-brainer, right? The next we move down, and I love this because the next thing we go into is this thing about a peace offering. Right. And we're being shown this boundary of three days. You eat the peace offering, okay? You do it, and it's shared between you and the Lord. Mm -hmm. That is something shared. It's not just out in the world. It's the Lord takes part and you take part. The first day you can eat it. The second day you can eat it. But on the third day, if you eat it, it is considered no good. It's an abomination, which made me think of how you finish. Mm -hmm. Finish well. Even though you did the offering right, you partake, you um, commune with the Lord one day, two day, that third day, if you don't continue in what is asked, it's, it's done. And then you think about it. Think about Hosea into five and six where it talks about right on two days I'll heal you and on the third yes. day okay yes. there's a third day there we still have to be doing the proper um, actions that we're asked to do on that one okay on that third day another thing we see this week is taking care of the poor mm -hmm. I mean we're always told that and <laughs> I always giggle because uh, Malachi 3 the one I think it's 310 that everyone always quotes about God's gonna give me stuff yeah, yeah it really hooks in with this right here um, yes. It has to do with feeding the strangers, the poor, and the orphan. It doesn't have to do with you getting your money back. Sorry. <laughs> and um, here we see the Lord's like, look, don't be stingy. Don't be greedy. Don't have an evil eye. And the evil eye means greedy eye, okay? Mm -hmm. So the Lord's saying, look, when you, when you do your fields, you leave the corners. Mm -hmm. Which shows you in the book of Ruth that um, Boaz was following, following Torah, Torah. Because he left and the outside. And because he was following Torah... The yes, wife got the wife in. got to come in. <gasps> oh my oh, gosh. Oh, that's good. I know. <laughs> so, Boaz is, um, in a way, a type of Christ. Okay? Yes. And so, he's keeping Torah, doing what he's supposed to. And because of that, the bride comes in mm -hmm. and is accepted by him. And what she do? She becomes a part of his family. Okay? She's Gentile. Yes, but she Ooh, takes she's on. She's grafted in. Yeah, she's yeah, grafted she on, on and completely takes on his qualities. Yeah, and then on the more physical side of that, I was thinking Israel, when they came back into the land in 48 and began to um, bring the Torah back to the land and walk it out, now you have the Hebrew roots, type roots movement. Oh, who, yeah. Because they are being obedient. We're now seeing it and we're, and being, we're being, our eyes in. are being opened and the blindness is being taken away, their blindness is being taken away, right. and we're really making that one new man. Yeah, and one day both eyes are going to be able to focus together. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, but soon. We even see a hint of this with Yeshua where he says in Matthew 15 um, to the woman when she, or when she says, well, even the dogs get crumbs, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But that's the idea of this. Yeah. You know, you... You don't just scoop it all up for yourselves. You leave a little bit behind for those. And who right. gleaned in the in the um, fields were your poor, your strangers, your mm -hmm. orphans, your widows. Those are the ones who went out there. So people who were not from Israel, they weren't native born. They moved there because they want to live there. That's who gets to glean, okay? The poor were always taken care of by the Lord, yet through the obedience of those who walked in Him. And they... They had to come to the field physically. Yes, they had and to do the work. Gather the um, right the grain in or whatever. Yeah. It wasn't a they picked it up and took it to the right. Port. The landowner didn't everyone do had their system. right. Everyone right. had their part, and right. that's how it's supposed to work. Yes. And if it if we did that, I think things would work a lot better on yeah. our welfare system. <laughs> yeah. Right. We also see that a little bit later on in nineteen, where he's saying with the weights, be true in business. Now, these are just everyday applicable things. If your scales, right, if your scale is going just a little bit, you give it to the favor of the one who's purchasing. You know, I noticed truly that Walmart scales do that when I put the food on, right? It's like um, 71, 72, 71, 72, 71. It always goes to the one lower. And I thought the other day. Well, that's nice. Wow. That is nice. Maybe that's why they're so... Maybe that's why they're doing so well. I don't know. I don't know. I'm kidding. <laughs> but I just... That's not an that, endorsement no, for Walmart. No, 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 no. Not at all. <laughs> but it is an endorsement to keep your business right. <laughs> to be an honest person um, in your business. The sages say that when you stand on Judgment Day before the Lord, the first question he's going to ask you is, were you faithful and honest in your business transactions? Mm -hmm. Now we also see in here um, in 19.3 that you're to honor your mother and father and to keep the Sabbath. 
Well, Yeshua did this, obviously. He honored them both, right? And he kept Sabbath. He showed us how to keep Sabbath. So where he says, you know, man is Lord of the Sabbath, that means I'm showing you how to keep it. Now you can do it. Not, um, you just do whatever you want to do on it. Right. Okay? Because you honor your mother and father, too. Which means respect, okay? You take care of them. You do what you're supposed to. That doesn't mean, though, for government or for parent, if they tell you to do something that um, contradicts Torah, the Word of God, then, no. The Lord takes precedence, and then the parent. So that's not disrespectful to your government nor your parents. If they're like, you need to go steal this, you're like, nope, not doing it. Yeah. Okay, that's good. You're, you're choosing properly. <laughs> we see a lot in this week, you see cut off and death, put to death. Cut off means you're kicked out. Like 1 Corinthians 5, Paul says, get them out, kick them out. Okay? It doesn't mean they can't come back in. Okay? They can come back in when they're remorseful, when they've gotten it together. Um, but again, it's, it's the spiritual ramifications in which their actions has. Right. We already learned last week that the, the land will vomit you out. So when the Lord's like, kick them out, it's not like, oh, just, they're bad. Turn on them. It's, that is going to affect you to where even you who's doing right will end up being kicked out of the land because it works. You function as a unit. Right. Can right? two it's walk together body. unless they agree? Exactly. You Good. have to remove yourself yes, from that. Right. And that doesn't mean now you have to hate them. You know, oh, it talks about that this week too. Hating your brother in your heart. Mm -hmm. All right. Now we see that in the Brit Hanashah, several scriptures that tell us how to address a brother when we have an issue against them, right? If we know they have an issue against us, we are before we come to the Lord to go and address them, right? Mm -hmm. If we have an issue against them, then we are to go to them privately. No, now I'm to go with a witness, just the two of us, okay? And then after that, then they have to be removed if, they, if they're doing wrong and they refuse. Hatred will always come out of our heart, always, if we do not keep it in check. Can I say something? Yeah. We all have those um, secret places that we don't realize we have. So when yes. it does come out, yes, that the Lord allows those things to come out so you can address them. Right. And Not so you can go, oh, I'm such a bad person. Oh, I'm right. terrible. We all have them. Mm -hmm. So when we, he will always allow situations to arise where we want to, uh, you know, lash out. And yeah. it's just for our, so we can get that correct you know create in me a clean heart uh, yes and, and that's and, how he's gonna do it <laughs> you know he also talks about he'll never give us more than we can handle yes but he'll bring it out at the time in which we can now handle it so if something's hitting us it's because he knows look you can choose life mm -hmm. not death now will we do it you know we're through we're being put through the fire all the time mm -hmm. in order to um, get the dross out right to be purified and to be able yes. to really become more like him to be more reflective of him yes and we need to be careful that we're not all oh, the devil's trying to get me again right. when really the Lord is trying to show you what's really in your heart right so you can deal with it finally yeah you know we always say well it's our Lord knows our heart he does that scares me sometimes yes. <laughs> because I don't know my heart we say we do but we don't Jeremiah says you know, our it's heart the is a most thing. deceitful thing, okay? Most wicked and deceitful. So when the Lord knows our heart, he's like, I completely know why you're really doing that. Yes. Really, 2027, I think, probably sums up the whole week. And it says, and you shall guard all my laws and all my right rulings and do them, so that the land where I bring you to dwell does not vomit you out. And do not walk in the laws of the nations which I drive you out from before, uh, out from before you, for they do all these, and therefore I loathe them. Their actions made them loathsome to the Lord. So, I know that the Lord loves us. I know the Lord loves the sinner. But I heard Jim Staley give a definition of that, and I really grabbed a hold of that. And he said, you know, it's not that the Lord loves us in our sinful state. It's that he loves the fact that we're made in his image and who we could be. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's why he can say Esau hate. He refused to be in covenant with him because he sees what he's become. But as on the on the side of loving a human, he loves that he's made in his image and he loves the potential he would have had. So in that case, yes, we're all loved because God sees himself in us mm -hmm. and he sees the potential. But he can loathe us. He can see us as an abomination. He can puke us out of his mouth, vomit us out. Because we're so disgusting and unpalatable. Okay? And um, we don't want to be that. 
So here's the way that we are palatable. Here's the way we are kept inside. Here's the way we can walk. There were a lot more detailed things this week, dealing with the sex, dealing with um, all the things that they did in the land. So look around in our land, look around the world, the ways of the world. We are not to participate in those. Yeah. Mixing, do not mix. Okay, the entire tour deals with do not mix. This week also talked about your animals. It talked about um, your clothing not mixing, and that, those are whole, whole nother uh, teaching to look at. But just look at them and realize all the aspects in which the Lord's saying, please be holy, please be separate mm -hmm. from your surroundings. All right. Thanks for joining us for this week's Torah portion. We'll see you on the flip side with the Brit Hadashah. Y'all have a wonderful week. Shalom. Shalom.